In this tutorial, I'll use the style sheet from the Blend for Web Morphing Code Snippet to style sliders so that they go from looking like this to looking like this. The starting point for this tutorial is the project made in the previous tutorial. You can download the Blender file and the JavaScript file from my website, but all you need to work through this tutorial is a project with two sliders in it. I'm going to start by comparing these functions that create the sliders with the functions in the version that uses the style sheet. With cascading styles, style information does not have to come from a style sheet and here I've applied some styling using JavaScript. I set the width of the sliders to 33% of the document body but in the new version I've commented the lines out. I want all the style information to come from a copy of the morphing style sheet. One line has been added that sets the class name attribute. In both sliders the class name attribute has been set to input slider. Going to the style sheet and looking for the class input slider both sliders will have these styles applied to them. Going back to the code, in the new version, this section of code has been added. Complex layouts can be made by placing boxes within boxes. As the comment says, this code makes the first row by adding a name label and the first slider to a container box. Similarly, this code makes the second row by adding another label and the second slider to the second container box and putting boxes within boxes this code puts the row container boxes inside the main sliders container box. With the CSS box model, the div tag is usually used for making container boxes. The main box containing all the sliders is appended to the body of the web page. All the container boxes and all the name labels have their class name set so they will be linked to class selectors in the style sheet. Next I'm going to leave the JavaScript file and look at the style sheet, the .css file. The CSS starter file that you get with a new project is nearly empty. It does set the main canvas container to be 100% of the document body, but nearly empty compared with the style sheet of the morphing code snippet. I want to get all this style information into the Orbit Project style sheet. There's a few ways I could do this, but the way I'm going to do it is click Ctrl and A to select all, Ctrl and C to copy, click Ctrl and A, Ctrl and V to paste. The project with the extra JavaScript and extra style information now has nicely styled sliders. Next, I'm going to make a few changes to the style sheet. 
the main slider's container box will be positioned absolutely 20 pixels from the right of its container box and 20 pixels from the bottom of its container box with a z-index of 1 which will put it in front of elements with the default z-index of 0. By changing these I can put the sliders in any of the four corners of the web page to put them in the top left hand corner change right to left and bottom to top. Next I'm going to look at the class selector text label. The name labels are linked to this class selector. Here the text colour is set to white. Here are the name labels with white text and we need a dark background colour for good contrast. The background colour has a two-digit hexadecimal number for the red value, two digits for the green value, and a two-digit hexadecimal number for the blue value. When the red, green and blue values are the same, the background colour will be a shade of grey. Hexadecimal base 16 digits run from 0 to F F is 15 in base 10, so 3 is quite a low value, so this will be quite a dark shade of grey. I'm going to change the background colour to a dark red by changing the green value to 0, 0, and the blue value to 0, 0, and leaving the red value at 3, 2. If all the hexadecimal digits are the same, the colour can be abbreviated to three digits instead of six. And finally, I'm going to change one of the styles that is applied to these sliders. When you move a slider, the slider track changes to blue. You can tell this is a blue colour because the blue value is the highest. Because sliders are a relatively new feature, the styling information is set up specifically for each browser. WebKit is for Chrome and Safari browsers. MS is for Microsoft browsers. And Moz is for Firefox. You would want the slider to look the same in all browsers. So we have to change the color value in three places. I'm going to be lazy and just type in a colour name. Clicking save and reloading the web page, we get a dark red background on our labels and a pink track when we move the sliders. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the i icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.